Last week, when recommending an Oxalo scooter, I confessed that I had originally ridiculed my wife for the purchase of that scooter. I said to her that there was absolutely no way I would ever use the scooter. Uh, I thought they were for children or teenagers, and I admitted I was wrong. It's since been pointed out to me that that was not the only time where I ridiculed, teased or laughed at my wife's purchases and then were subsequently forced to back down and admit I was wrong. So, here we are then. Let's get this over with. Yes, the truth is, there have been many occasions when I've been forced into a humiliating U-turn, having laughed at my wife's purchases or even her advice. So, in the interests of balance, let's just look at a few of those now. The first one is moisturiser. When I was, uh, I remember seeing an advert in the late 90s for moisturiser and I laughed at it. I thought, there's no market for men's beauty products. Um, but it was my wife was the one who finally persuaded me to give moisturiser a go. I never thought I'd use moisturiser, I thought it was a crock. But now I'm an enthusiastic user of number seven from Boots. She was right, I was wrong. My wife also told me that I didn't drink enough water and I needed to hydrate more. Um, and I just said, well, I can't. I find it difficult to drink large quantities of water. And she said, well, it's much easier if you, if you drink warm water. And I laughed in her face, ridiculed her drinking warm water. It was ridiculous, I'm not gonna do that. But I, I tried it and, you know, it, it's good, it's true. It is much easier to drink warm water. And now I'm always well hydrated. She was right and I was wrong. I'd once been suffering with headaches for a couple of weeks and she told me that I needed to go to the opticians because I needed glasses and that was probably where my headaches were coming from. I laughed because I told her that my eyesight was absolutely perfect, but the headaches were quite annoying and nothing was working. So I went to the opticians and yeah, I needed glasses. She was right, I was wrong. I ridiculed my wife when she bought a set of Moroccan dinnerware because there were no plates in it. I mean, this is a bowl, right? But then I had to admit they were perfect for pasta, my favourite food. She was right, I was wrong. I steal stuff from her too. Uh, there's this uh, Samsonite backpack. Um, this is hers, but I used it a few times and then a couple more times and then it, it just migrated to my side of the bedroom and, and it's sort of mine now. Um, and also she had a foldable backpack which I, I didn't think was very good but then I used it and I thought actually that's quite useful so I used it quite a lot until it broke and then she had to buy me a new foldable backpack that's just mine and now she hasn't got one and she had to pay for this one. She was right, I was wrong. But despite all the occasions when my wife was right and I was wrong, I've always felt on pretty safe ground when it's come to this. It's my wife's shopping trolley, of the kind used exclusively by the elderly. I've been relentless in the mocking of my wife whenever she's chosen to use this particular senior citizen's item. And the reason for that is I've always felt safe in the knowledge that I'd never have to back down and admit I was wrong at least until we're well into our 80s. But today, due to a really unusual set of circumstances, I have had to back down a lot earlier than I ever thought possible and ask if I could borrow this item because I need to use it. Come on, I'll explain on the way. began in the famous lockdown of 2020. You might remember it. I could see it coming about a week away. So I had this idea of setting up a WhatsApp group for the whole street in case anyone on the street was um, in need of any help and we could step in and help them out, go shopping or whatever. This worked pretty well. Um, and especially in the early days, we really tried to help each other out. I don't know if you remember, but everybody was at one stage really worried about how much food they'd be able to get. So 
People were sending round text with tips of how to get the food that uh, people were particularly after. Things like uh, dried pasta and yeast. Yeast was a really big thing on our street. Everyone decided they were going to uh, bake their own bread and stuff. And um, so people were very much wanted yeast and all kinds of rumours flew around about where you might be able to buy yeast. And it was around this time that I made my great discovery of the illicit bread black market. Okay, it wasn't really a black market as such, um, but I did get quite an exciting anonymous text telling me about this company that uh, supplied bread to restaurants and hotels and things. And obviously with uh, lockdown, they could no longer do that. So they were trying to keep the business going by selling bread to individuals or ideally streets of people. So I uh, texted the uh, number I was given and suddenly I found myself speaking to a mysterious French person who told me that uh, indeed that's what he was trying to do. So I did the deal and managed to get bread for our street. Ever since then I've been coordinating the bread order every single week but people with cars have been going to pick up the large amounts of bread. But as lockdown has started easing the uh, orders have started to tail off as people have started to get their bread from where they used to get it from, wherever that was. Uh, and this week, um, with, that, with that bread order slightly down, I decided it's my turn to uh, go and pick the bread up. So I've made the trek to the other side of the area where I live. And of course, that is why I need my wife's shopping trolley. The trolley normally used by the elderly. My wife was right, again. And on top of everything else, it's starting to rain really hard. I've just arrived now at where I think uh, the bread is baked in a kind of large trading estate. It's quite exciting. Uh, I've been getting bread from here for months, really delicious bread. Uh, the company is called Bread Bread and um, I'm sure it's here because I can actually smell the bread. It smells delicious. Let's go in. Yeah, I found the right place and uh, just putting the bread in the bag now. So as you saw there, uh, all the bread fitted in like absolutely perfectly into the old person's shopping trolley. It's really irritating. I was hoping that the trolley would somehow fail and I'd still be proof right on some sort of level, but no, it's just right. And it's, it's quite easy just dragging this along. It's about a mile to walk home. It's not it's gonna be fine sort of irritating. The sun's come out as well as if like the whole world's laughing at me. I do just want to point out though that, that she's not always right, you know, sometimes I'm, I'm right as well. Like, for example, I really love Marmite, I, I mentioned that last week. Oh, I, I like uh, Marmite as well. Love Marmite on toast. And for years she ridiculed me for it, she said Marmite was disgusting. Just like brown horribleness and she thought it was horrible. And then at some point, I don't really know when, she started eating it. And now she loves it. She eats loads of it, in fact. I put it on like a normal person. I put it on very lightly onto my toast. But she slathers it on like, 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 you know, like a load of tar on top. I used to have a nice little pot of Marmite that would last me a couple of weeks. Now we get through one of those large pots every week. She eats so much of it. So, you know, sometimes I'm right too. <laughs> 